Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about angle relationships and some of the theorems that we will be introducing and are very important in geometry. So let's get started with the do now so we can introduce these theorems and relationships. So the given here, according to the diagram, is that angle two and angle three are supplementary. How do we prove that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three? So first, let's set up a statement reason table. And here we only have one given, so we don't have much of a choice to pick from. So we'll state also the first given here, that angle two and angle three are supplementary. So what does that tell us? What does that mean that they're supplementary? Well, we learned that in a previous definition, an angle is supplementary if and only if the measure of those angles add up to 180 degrees. So we can now use the definition to state it. So here we write measure of angle two plus measure of angle three is equal to 180. And that is the definition of supplementary angles as a reason. Notice that here we have to use measure of an angle because we have an equality and as we're setting that, we're setting the sum equal to a numerical angle value, okay? And just as a reminder, the definition of supplementary angles states the following. Two angles are supplementary if and only if those two angles measures add up to 180, okay? Okay, so what can we do next here? We somehow want to prove that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three, right? So in the diagram here, uh, we know that we have AB, right? So we can assume that that is actually a straight line here. So we have AB. And normally that should be something also uh, be stated in the givens, okay? So normally you should say that line AB is a given, okay? So what does that tell us? That this here is a straight line here at this point, okay? So let's think about this. If we have a straight line, and then we have two angles that are adjacent here. What can we say about those two angles? Well, the first thing we can say is that they're supplementary and therefore they add up to 180 degrees. So first, we somehow need to state that these two angles are supplementary, right? For example, in the given here, we were given that these two angles are supplementary. However, for one and two, we're not told that they're supplementary. So we have to state it. So let's state it. For number three, as a statement, we say that angle two and angle one are supplementary. And again, we know it because these two angles are adjacent and they lie on a straight line, okay? So what's the reason for that? So there's a new theorem that I would like to introduce here. And the theorem states the following, that if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. Now, what does that mean? So what that means is the following. Here we have the exterior sides of two adjacent angles that are opposite rays. So let's visualize this, okay? So for example, let's say that you have a ray that goes this way, okay? So let's make the ray straight. Okay, so at this point, Let's say that's the vertex, so that's one of the ray. The other ray also goes from this point to this side, okay? So if you think about this, now these are the opposite rays, okay? All right, one goes to the left, one goes to the right. So it says here the exterior sides of two adjacent angles. Now we have to somehow draw adjacent angles in there. So let's, for example, draw another ray here at some angle. But these two angles here, let's call this angle one, okay? And I'm gonna call this angle two. Very similar to the diagram. So these are the adjacent angles. Now, when we talk about exterior sides of the two adjacent angles, we actually mean this, right? This one and this one. These are the exterior sides of the two adjacent angles, right? Because remember that an angle, when we have this two rays, uh, these are the 
these are the exterior sides exterior side and then we have here another exterior side but in this case we don't count the one in the center at the exterior side but only the ones um, that are established by the opposite rays okay so it turns out that if this is the case according to the theorem then the angles are supplementary so now that we have established that angle 2 and angle 1 are supplementary, what else can we state here? Now we can use the definition of supplementary angles again to state what? That angle 2 and angle 1, their measures add up to 180 degrees. And again, that is the definition of supplementary angles. Okay, so how do we use these premises now or these statements that we have so far to prove that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three. Well, if you look at step number two here, okay, if you focus on step two and step four, they have something in common. They both add up to 180 degrees. So we can say the following then. So here we have measure of angle two plus measure of angle three is equal to measure of angle two plus measure of angle one. And the reason is the substitution postulate. Okay, it seems like that we're almost there, right? With measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three. How do we know that those two angle measures are equal? Well, if you look at the fifth step, they both share something, both sides of the equality. Measure of angle two. We also know that the measure of angle two is equal to itself because of the reflexive property, right? And that is an important step. It may seem redundant, but it is important because for the seventh step, we want to apply the subtraction postulate and subtract measure of angle two from measure of angle two plus three equal to measure of angle two plus one at the same time on both sides of the equation. So again, measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three because of the subtraction postulate. Remember from a previous video, that the definition of the subtraction postulate is when you subtract equal quantities, which is this here, from the other equal quantities, which is this one. So you're basically doing, doing the first one minus the second one, okay? So notice that in today's lesson so far, we have introduced a new theorem that is very important, which is if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. So the question arises, is there a similar theorem for when the angles are complementary or basically not opposite rays, but perpendicular rays? Well, the answer is yes, there's a similar theorem. And the theorem goes as follows. If the exterior sides of two acute adjacent angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. You know, and again here, if you look at the wording here, it says the exterior sides, right? So here we're referring to this one and this one. These are the exterior sides, right, of the two adjacent angles. So again, we have angle one and two. These are the adjacent angles, but the exterior sides, they're perpendicular. Okay, so there's a sign here that shows perpendicularity here. Then we can say these two angles, one and two, are complementary. Now, okay. once you have established that uh, the angles are either supplementary or complementary, then you can continue and use the definition of supplementary angles to state that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is 180 degrees, or in the complementary case to state that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is equal to 90 degrees because of the definition of complementary angles. So these are usually the steps. Again, if in a proof it is not given that the angles are supplementary or complementary, first you need to state it using these theorems, okay? And then you can go ahead and use the definition to talk about any sum of those angles. But if it's given to you, then you can go straight ahead and state the definition of supplementary angles or complementary angles. So at this point, let's look at another example that is going to lead us into another theorem and some of the definitions here. So let's say you have two lines that are A and B and both are perpendicular. So that's the given. How do we prove that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle two? 
So again, let's construct the statement reason table and place the first given in the table. Now, what can we conclude here from all the definitions we know so far? Well, if you look at angle one and angle two respectively, then what can you say about those two angles? Well, we know that those two angles are right angles. And that is the definition of perpendicular lines, the fact that angle one and angle two are right angles. So the definition states that two lines are perpendicular if and only if the two lines intersect to form right angles. Why is it a biconditional? Because it goes both ways, right? If two lines are perpendicular and they intersect, then they form right angles. Or you can say, if two lines intersect to form right angles, then the two lines are perpendicular. So as you can see, it goes both ways, the conditional and its converse is true, therefore the biconditional is true as well. Now, what can you say about angle one and angle two, respectively, since they're right angles? Well, in this case, we can say that those two angles are both 90 degrees. So for step number three and four, we can say that measure of angle one is 90 and also measure of angle two is 90. And the reason is the definition of right angles. Okay, so now we have a new definition. Basically, an angle is a right angle if and only if the angle measures 90. And then finally, we know that measure of angle one and two both equal to 90. So now we can substitute and say that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle two. Again, the substitution postulate. So let's say you take this proof a step further and state that angle one and angle two are congruent. So if we state that angle one and two are congruent, that will be now the definition of congruent angles. So notice here something. We can actually change this, what we want to prove. We actually didn't prove that measure of angle one and two are equal in measure. We did it, but we actually went a step further, right? So what we did here, we proved that angle one and two are congruent, okay? It's just a step further. So what this means here is that now we can develop a new theorem based on this, okay? Because we have proven something and this is always going to be true, okay? So let's think about this. Here we have the following. If line A is perpendicular to line B, then we have that angle one is congruent to angle two, okay? So now we can make a theorem out of this and we know that is true. But if you think about this and you can actually prove it, you also know that, okay, if angle one is congruent to angle two, then you also know that line A is perpendicular to line B, okay? So we know that this can go both ways. So that means that now we can develop a theorem that is actually a biconditional, okay? And the biconditional would be as follows. So the theorem would be as follows. Two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form congruent adjacent angles. So what does this mean, ladies and gentlemen? that we don't have to prove this again. Whatever we just did, we already proved it, and now you can go ahead and use this theorem without proving it. So I hope that you can now see the idea of geometry, how it is actually a building block. We first started with postulates, then we proved certain things to develop theorems. Now we use other definitions and theorems to prove a new theorem. And guess what? In future lessons, we can now use this very theorem that we just developed to prove other things, to develop other theorems. So that's how the axiomatic system works for geometry, okay? So let's summarize what we did in today's lesson. In today's lesson, again, we developed the two theorems. If the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. And if the exterior sides of two acute adjacent angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. And using those theorems, we can then define supplementary or complementary angles by using the sum of the measures, which equal to 180 and 90 degrees, respectively. Then we discussed the two new definitions. Two lines are perpendicular if and only if the two lines intersect to form right angles. And an angle is a right angle if and only if the angle measures 90. 
And finally, we develop the new theorem, which states that two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form congruent adjacent angles. So that's basically it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please place a comment in the comment section here in the YouTube video. Have a great day.